Other assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here is the list of topics to be covered in this video. So we'll begin by finding all solutions to the equation secant of t equals root 2, but t is restricted. t must be in between minus pi and pi. It might be equal to pi, but it will not be equal to minus pi. So secant of t is simply 1 over cosine, so we can reciprocate this to get cosine of t equals 1 over root 2, aka root 2 over 2. Simply looking at a reference circle, we can spot a few different angles where the cosine of t is equal to root 2 over 2. So here's our standard unit circle. Because we're looking for the cosine, aka the x coordinate, to take on a certain value, we throw down the vertical line, x equals root 2 over 2. There are two angles, and these are standard reference angles, pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So we could say those are our two solutions, but 7 pi over 4 is too big. It's larger than pi, and t is restricted. Also, t could be negative. So observe that 7 pi over 4 is coterminal with minus pi over 4, so we'll use that instead. There are two solutions, plus or minus pi over 4. There is, however, another way to do this problem. We can do it without using a reference circle. So we had arrived at the following place. We want the cosine of t to be root 2 over 2, in other words, an x-coordinate. We throw down the x equals root 2 over 2 vertical line, and we see that it intersects our circle twice. So we know there are two solutions in a standard rotation of the circle. By taking an arc cosine, we would solve that t is the arc cosine of root 2 over 2, which by punching into a calculator or looking up in a reference somewhere, you would see is exactly pi over 4. So arc cosine has range from 0 to pi. So this is the only solution in the interval from 0 to pi, in other words, quadrants 1 and 2. And looking at the picture we drew, we knew we have found the quadrant 1 solution. But by symmetry, if pi over 4 is the angle that we rotate up from the axis to get to this height, then minus pi over 4 will be the angle we rotate down. And once again, we find our two solutions to be plus or minus pi over 4. In problem two, we'll find all solutions to the equation two times the sine of theta equals one, where theta is restricted to be in a pretty typical interval from zero to two pi, where it might equal zero, but it's not allowed to equal two pi. Division by two says we're just looking for the sine of theta to be a half. Now there are reference angles whose sine is a half, so we could solve this problem just by looking at a reference circle, finding all the angles in one standard rotation from zero to two pi whose sine is a half. But we're going to do it a slightly more general way that would work even if we were not looking for standard reference angles. For example, if we were solving the equation sine of theta equals one third, there aren't reference angles whose sine is a third, so we'd be out of luck if that was our only method. So we're going to do it a more general way. So let's find all solutions to sine theta equals one half on this restricted interval. So let's take an arc sine and say that theta could be the arc sine of one half. Now that will give us the unique solution in the interval, which is the range of the arc sine function, which is from minus pi over two to pi over two. Now, if this value happens to be positive, it is one of our allowable solutions. We remember are only looking for thetas from zero to two pi, but there might be other solutions. If this value arc sine of one half happens to be negative, we could add two pi to it. If it is negative, it is between minus pi over two and zero and adding two pi to it will bring it within our acceptable range of solutions. So theta equals arc sine of one half is one possible solution if it is non-negative and therefore in the interval from zero to pi over two. Or maybe this angle is negative, and as discussed, we could then add 2 pi to find a coterminal angle. Now we know arc sine produces angles in quadrants 1 and 4 whose sine takes a particular value. Here, theta is an angle, it's either in quadrant 1 or 4, but its sine must be 1 half. In other words, theta corresponds to a point on the unit circle with a positive y value, so it can't be in quadrant 4, it must be in quadrant 1. So arc sine of 1 half is a quadrant 1 angle whose sine is 1 half, so that is one solution. Are there any other solutions? Now we found one solution to our equation, arc sine of one half is a totally acceptable value for theta. Are there others? So here's our unit circle. We're solving for the sine of theta to be a half so we can draw the line y equals one half. Observe that it intersects the circle in two locations. So there is a solution in quadrant one, but there's also a solution in quadrant two. We've already discussed that the value arc sine of one half is an angle that must be in quadrant one. So it's that angle there. Based on symmetry of the circle, we can actually figure out what the quadrant two angle is. So arc sine of one half starts from the right direction of x and rotates counterclockwise a given amount. 
the angle we're looking for in quadrant two starts from the opposite direction and rotates in the opposite direction. So it is pi minus that. It starts from an angle of pi, but then rotates back arc sine of one half, which is the amount that we rotated on the right. So pi minus arc sine of one half is a quadrant two solution. So there are our two uh, values, pi minus arc sine of a half and arc sine of one half. Now, as it happens, arc sine of one half is exactly equal to pi over six, so we can compute these to be pi over six and five pi over six. In problem three, we'll find all solutions to the equation two times cosine of theta equals minus root three on the standard interval from zero to two pi, where theta might equal zero, but it must be strictly less than two pi. We divide by two, we get cosine of theta equals minus root three over two. Now we might recognize this as a value associated with standard reference angles, but let's ignore that so that we can use our more general solution. Taking an arc cosine, theta is perhaps the arc cosine of minus root three over two. Now the range of arc cosine is from zero to pi, it's quadrants one and two. Now we're looking for the cosine to be negative root three over two, so we're not looking for a quadrant one angle, so this arc cos of minus root three over two is a quadrant two solution. Are there other solutions that the arc cosine function isn't quite giving us? So let's draw the unit circle, and because we're looking for a cosine, let's look at the line x equals minus root three over two. Here we have it. There are in fact two solutions in one standard rotation of the circle. We've already found something in quadrant two, arc cos of minus root three over two. But we are looking for a solution in quadrant three. Now, what is it? Instead of starting from the right x-axis and rotating counterclockwise a given amount, arc cosine of minus root three over two, we'll get this, the quadrant three solution by rotating clockwise. In other words, minus the same amount of rotation, which was arc cosine of minus root three over two. But that would be a negative angle, and if we look at our restriction on theta, it must be between 0 and 2 pi. So we'll make a coterminal angle by adding 2 pi to it. So here are our two solutions, arc cos of minus root 3 over 2 and 2 pi minus arc cos of negative root 3 over 2. As it happens, the arc cosine of minus root 3 over 2 is exactly 5 pi over 6. That's our standard reference angle. So we can compute the solutions to be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. In problem four, let's find all solutions to the tangent of t equals one, and t is now restricted to being between minus pi and pi, where it must be larger than minus pi, but it is less than or possibly equal to pi. Now we just go ahead and take an arctan. t might be equal to the arctangent of one. Arctan has a range minus pi over two to positive pi over two, in other words, quadrants one and four. So this gives us an angle in quadrant one or four whose tangent is one. In other words, that angle points somewhere on the unit circle with coordinates x, y, where the ratio y over x, in other words, the tangent, is equal to one. So it must intersect the line y equals x for y over x to be equal to one. Now, since the tangent is positive, positive one, it's not quadrant four. There, the tangent would be negative. So arctan of one is the quadrant one angle where the tangent is one. Are there other solutions, however, in the acceptable range of t that the arctan function wasn't telling us? So let's draw the unit circle and the line whose intersections with the unit circle are giving us our solutions. And in this example, it was the line y equals x. Here's the unit circle, here's y equals x. Observe there is a quadrant three intersection. So in quadrant one, we have a red arrow pointing up and to the right, but there is this sort of mirror image of it in quadrant three. We know the quadrant one solution is arctan of one. And based on symmetry, going from the direction arctan of one, if we just throw an additional 180 degrees or pi radians in either direction, we'll be pointing over there. But t was not allowed to be bigger than pi. So I don't wanna add pi to this existing angle, I wanna subtract it. So arctan of one minus pi is going to be the angle pointing down and to the left. As it happens, the arctan of one is exactly pi over four, so we can compute these two values to be pi over four and minus three pi over four. Now in problem five, we have six equations and six solutions, and we have to match equations to their solutions. So we're just gonna go through one by one. First, for cosine of theta being minus one, we're looking for an x coordinate to take on the lowest possible value. That happens at the left side of the circle. One angle where that happens is exactly pi, but then it'll happen once per rotation. So we're looking for pi plus any number of full rotations. That's option B on the right, pi, plus any number k times a full rotation two pi. 
So there's the solution to the first equation. Next, we want the y value, the sine, to be as large as possible. That's at the top of the circle. That's pi over 2, and then it does it once per rotation. So we're looking for a solution pi over 2 plus any number of full rotations. That's option f. Next, we want the cosine to be as large as possible. That's at the right. That is an angle of 0, and it happens once per rotation. So 0 plus any number of rotations is option e. There we go. The sine of theta being 0 takes on the median value. That happens at the right and left of the circle, so one such angle is 0, but then it happens twice per rotation, exactly on the middle of the rotation. So we want 0 plus not 2 pi times a number, but pi, half of a rotation. So there we have it, 0 plus pi times any integer. Next, we want the sine, the y-coordinate, to be as small as possible. That's at the bottom. That's the angle 3 pi over 2. Then it happens once per rotation. So we're looking for 3 pi over 2 plus any number of rotations. There we have it. And finally, the cosine, the x-coordinate, should be the median value. That's at the top and the bottom. For example, pi over 2, and then twice per rotation, or once per half rotation. So pi over 2 plus a single pi, a half rotation, times any integer. So here we have it, we've matched all the equations to their solutions. In problem 6, let's find all solutions to sine theta equals root 3 over 2. So here is our standard unit circle. We want the sine to be root 3 over 2. We see there are two angles where that happens. If we just take an arc sine, that will give us a solution between plus or minus pi over 2, which we see is going to happen in quadrant 1, because the sine of the angle should be positive root 3 over 2. So this angle here in quadrant 1 is arc sine of root 3 over 2. By symmetry, we can see that pi minus arc sine of root 3 over 2 will be this angle over on the left. Then, each of these solutions happens once per rotation. So the solution could be arc sine of root 3 over 2 plus 2 pi times any number, or pi minus arc sine of root 3 over 2 plus 2 pi times any integer. Now it just so happens that the arc sine of root 3 over 2 is pi over 3, so you could replace that and get a slightly nicer looking solution, but I would consider that entirely optional here. Of course, your mileage may vary with other instructors. In problem 7, let's find all solutions to the tangent of 4 theta equals 0 in the standard interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0 but not 2 pi. If we just take an arctangent, we get that 4 theta is the arctan of 0, which is 0. That gives us the unique solution between plus or minus pi over 2, that being the range of the arctangent function. But this is the unique 4 theta, because we see here that 4 theta is the arctan of 0, not just theta. So 4 theta equals 0 is the only value of 4 theta in this interval that is a solution, but the tangent function has period pi. So all solutions will be given by 4 theta, the thing that was inside the tangent function, is 0, the one solution we found, plus any integer k times the period of the tangent function pi. Division by 4 then says theta is pi over 4 times any integer. Now that we've found every solution, pi over 4 times any integer, we turn our attention to say which of those solutions are in between 0 and 2 pi. For which values of k is pi over 4 times k in between 0 and 2 pi, where it could be 0 but can't be exactly 2 pi? So we want pi over 4 times k to be in between 0 and 2 pi. Multiplication by 4 and division by pi give us 0 is less than or equal to k is less than 8. So k could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, but not 8. And if we go back to our original expression that theta is pi over 4 times k, with these choices of k, we get 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 4 as the full set of solutions to the original equation in the interval requested. Problem 8, let's find all solutions to cotangent of 3x equals 0 in the standard interval 0 to 2 pi, including 0, but not 2 pi. So the first thing we do is we find all the solutions. So taking an arc cotangent says that 3x is the arc cotan of 0, which is pi over 2. But the cotangent function has period pi. So 3x, the thing we were taking the cotangent of, could be pi over 2 plus any integer times the period pi. In other words, after division by 3, x could be pi over 6 plus pi over 3 times any integer pi. 
Now we can ask which choices of k will give x's in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we want 0 to be less than or equal to x to be less than 2 pi. Well, we've solved that x can be pi over 6 plus pi over 3 times any integer. Subtract pi over 6 from every term, multiply by 3 and divide by pi, and you get that k is bigger than or equal to minus a half, but is less than 11 over 2. But k has to be an integer. So it could be 0 through 5. So our solutions x are given by taking these choices of k back to our expression that x is pi over 6 plus pi over 3 times k. Computing these for those choices of k give us x could be pi over 6, pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, and 11 pi over 6. In problem 9, we'll find all the solutions to the equation sine of x over 2 equals root 2 minus the sine of x over 2 within the interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0, but not 2 pi. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find all the solutions completely. So by moving the sine of x over 2 over to the left and dividing by 2, we arrive at the expression sine of x over 2 equals root 2 over 2. We can take an arc sign giving us that the x over 2 inside the sine function could be pi over 4. Now this, because the range of the arc sine function is from plus or minus pi over 2, gives us a solution in quadrant 1 or 4, but because the sine is positive, it's in quadrant 1. So this is the only solution, or at least for x over 2, that is in quadrant 1. But we know there's a symmetric solution in quadrant 2, where the y value is also positive, of pi minus this, which would be 3 pi over 4. So in one rotation of the thing inside the sine function, which is x over 2, there are two solutions, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So all solutions altogether are given by the thing inside the sine function, x over 2, could be either pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4, plus any number of full rotations, 2 pi times any integer. Uh, multiply by 2, and we arrive at these expressions here. Now we can solve these separately to see which of these give values of x between 0 and 2 pi. So we want 0 to be less than or equal to pi over 2 plus 4 pi times k to be less than 2 pi, or 0 to be less than or equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi times k to be less than 2 pi. Solving for k, we get k is between negative an eighth and positive 3 eighths, or between negative 3 eighths and positive 1 eighth, and in both cases, the only integer is 0 giving us the two solutions we already had, x could be pi over 2, or it could be 3 pi over 2. Problem 10, let's find all the solutions to root 2 times the sine of 3 theta minus 1 equals 0, at least in the standard interval 0 to 2 pi, including 0 but not 2 pi. First thing we're going to do, we're going to find all the solutions all together. So by adding 1 to both sides and dividing by root 2, we get that the sine of 3 theta should be root 2 over 2. Taking an arc sine tells us that the thing we were taking the sine of, which is 3 theta, could be pi over 4. But we've overlooked a quadrant 2 solution, so we might also have pi minus that, which is 3 pi over 4. But these are for the value of 3 theta, the thing we were taking the sine of. So all possible solutions are 3 theta could be pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times any integer, in other words, any number of complete rotations. If we divide both of these by 3, we get an expression for theta. Now we ask, for each of these, which choices of k will let theta be in the interval from 0 to 2 pi? So we take both of those expressions and we say we want them to be between 0 and 2 pi. Solving for k gives the following. Negative 1 eighth is less than or equal to k is less than 23 eighths, or negative 3 eighths is less than or equal to k is less than 21 eighths. For the first, k equals 0, 1, and 2 will satisfy that, and in fact for the latter it's the same choices of k, which is not always going to be the case, but in this problem it was the same for both. So if I take k equals 0, 1, and 2 into the expression that theta should be pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3 times k, we get the values pi over 12, pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3, which is 3 pi over 4, and pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3 times 2, which is 17 pi over 12. And if we take the same choices of k to the other expression for theta, we get pi over 4, 11 pi over 12, and 19 pi over 12. Okay, let's find all the solutions to cos cubed of x equals 1 half times the cosine of x in the standard interval. And remember, cos cubed of x doesn't mean cosine of cosine of cosine. It means the cosine of x in parentheses all cubed. 
So as we've been doing, we're going to find all the solutions. We have cos cubed of x minus 1 half cos x should equal 0. Notice you can factor a cosine of x out of that, meaning cosine of x might be 0 or cosine of x squared could equal 1 half. So we're in fact looking for three different solutions. Cos of x could be 0, or it could be the square root of a half, root 2 over 2, or negative that, minus root 2 over 2. This gives us a bunch of values for x. In the standard rotation of the circle, what values of x have a cosine of 0? That's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Which values have a cosine of root 2 over 2? It's pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And which values have a cosine of negative root 2 over 2? 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So we have six solutions here. So the solutions all together are given by the collection of values pi over 2 plus any number of rotations, 3 pi over 2 plus any number of rotations, pi over 4 plus any number of rotations, 7 pi over 4 plus any number of rotations, 3 pi over 4 plus any number of rotations, and 5 pi over 4 plus any number of rotations. And we quickly see that since x had to be between 0 and 2 pi, and the thing inside the cosine was just x, it wasn't 7x or x over 8 or whatever, the 2 pi times k's really all have to be set to k equals 0. If k was positive, they'd be too big. If k was negative, they'd be too small. So the only solutions we found setting k equal to 0 in all of our expressions are the six values that we had already found. Problem 12, let's find all solutions to 2 cos squared w plus 3 cosine w plus 1 equals 0 in the standard interval from 0 to 2 pi, possibly including 0, but definitely not including 2 pi. Okay, the trick to a problem like this is to recognize that it's first a quadratic equation, and second, it's a trigonometric equation. Let's make this explicit. The cosine of w, I'm just going to call capital W. So what we really have is 2w squared plus 3w plus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic expression in w, and it factors as 2w plus 1 times w plus 1 equals 0, meaning w could be minus a half or it could be minus 1. And now that we've done the quadratic part, bring the trigonometry back into it. And remember that capital W was cosine of little w. So the cosine of w could be minus a half, or the cosine of w could be minus 1. In the interval from 0 to 2 pi, when is the cosine of something equal to minus a half? For the angles 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And when is it equal to minus 1? For pi. So altogether, our solutions are... 2 pi over 3, pi, and 4 pi over 3. Problem 13, let's find all the solutions to 2 times sine squared w minus sine of w minus 1 equals 0 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0 but not 2 pi. Let's go ahead and set capital W to be the sine of w. So we explicitly have a nice quadratic, 2 w squared minus w minus 1 equals 0. We factor it, and we say that w could be minus a half or 1. But then remember that w was sine of little w. So the sine of little w could be minus a half or it could be 1. And in the standard full 0 to 2 pi, when is the sine of an angle minus 1 half? 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And when is it equal to 1? Pi over 2. So we have found our three solutions and neat. And finally, let's find all solutions to 2 cos squared x minus cos x minus 3 equals 0, and we're not restricted to an interval, we just want to find every solution. So we've got one of these quadratic expressions, we set capital W to be the cosine of x, so 2 w squared minus w minus 3 is 0. I didn't find this to be particularly easy to factor, I just used the quadratic formula. So we find that w is 1 plus or minus root 25 over 4, that evaluates to 3 halves or minus 1. So the cosine of x could be 3 halves, or the cosine of x can be minus 1. Well, the cosine of x is sure as heck not 3 halves. Remember, the cosine is always trapped between plus or minus 1. It's never larger than 1. So it can never equal 3 halves. So the only solution we can possibly be looking for is for the cosine of x to equal minus 1. So the arc cosine of minus 1, which is pi, is one possible solution. And from periodicity of cosine, all solutions are given by pi plus 2 pi times any integer. There was no solution in another quadrant that the arc cosine function missed because our line x equals minus 1 will only intersect the circle once. There was only going to be one solution to find anyway, and the arc cosine function found it for us.